actually, uh, you know, the merge just happened with Ethereum, I think yesterday or two days ago, right? The DFS just came out with a, uh, with a, uh, a white paper, you know, uh, talking to the licensees about this kind of thing and what to do what are we, while we're looking to see what's, what's happening. So, we're tr- you know, we're, we're trying to figure this stuff out. But what's important is that th- there's a role for you guys. And the role is not just to sit on the side and, you know, throw, you know, throw popcorn at us and tell us we sucked. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you guys have to roll up your sleeves and get on the court and try to play. Do you love coffee and Monero as much as we do? Consider making gratuitous.org your daily cup. Pay with Monero for premium fresh beans. And if you like what you taste, send a digital cash tip directly to the Guatemalan farmers that made it possible. Proceeds help us grow this channel, Gratuitous, and Monero. This week on Monero Talk is sponsored by Monero.com Wallet. Store, send, receive, and exchange your Monero safely on iOS and Android too. Monero.com Wallet is open source and you always control your own keys. And by IVPN. Resist online surveillance with IVPN a privacy-focused, audited, and transparent VPN provider that accepts Monero directly. Monero.com Wallet and iVPN are trusted and verified by the Monero community. Monero Talk is also made possible from contributions by viewers and listeners like you. And supporting us is easier than ever. By typing in MoneroTalk.crypto in your Monero.com or Cake Wallet send address field to send us a tip. This week on Monero Talk. Douglas Tuman interviews Clyde Vanel. Clyde is a New York State Assemblyman, Chair of the Subcommittee on Internet and New Technologies, and Crypto Advocate. The two discuss bit license, the importance of narrative in creating a crypto-friendly regulatory environment, why aren't we seeing Monero on exchanges in New York, educating the public and legislators about the ethos of crypto, retaining the utility of cash in the digital world, capital gains tax, the future of Monero adoption in New York, and much more. Monero Talk starts now. Clyde, how's it going, man? Doug, man, how are you, man? How's it going? Excited to be on Monero Talks, man. You know, great stuff. Great the way, you know, I love the way that you, uh, you're you consistent with the show and feeding the community and the industry as a whole. So, you know, love what you're doing. Thank you for keeping and keep it going. Thank you, man. I was I was happy to learn that you actually you listen to Monero Talk. I do. I try. Yeah, I haven't, you know, I, I, I haven't seen every episode, but I, you know, I, I've known about you before before you reached out and I. And then I saw one of my colleagues on your show, and I'm like, "Oh my goodness, that's my man!" You know, so I was like, "I gotta get, I gotta, we gotta reach out to you." Oh, Ed Ra, you saw Ed Ra on there? I saw Ed, yes, yeah, okay. yeah, good friend of mine. Yeah, I saw Ed on here. Yeah, yeah, I, I know, I know him very well uh, as well through, you know, through the Republican Party. Uh, he's he's a great guy, and he recommended that I bring you on. Which is, oh wow, yeah, he said he said you are the crypto guy in terms of you know when it comes to New York State Assembly. Is, is that true? Is that a fair characterization? That, that might that might be true. I don't know if that's a compliment, but that that might that might be true. That's definitely a compliment, man. <laughs> Jeez, we, we need more of you. What's uh, are are there others like you? To, to, to tell us about it. What is like kind of the current state of the New York State Legislature in terms of where they're at with crypto, their understanding of crypto, who other than yourself is you know supporting crypto. Well, I think just generally technology in general, I think that it's really important for for government and policymakers to be able to make sure that we are prospective and that we are looking at issues for tomorrow, right? That we're that we're not just reacting to what's happening, but we're trying to prepare, you know, America and New York for what's to come and put us in the best position. When I first got elected, I, I got elected in 2016. When I first got elected, there were a number of issues that were related to technology that were floating uh, in the assembly and the Senate with no committee. Mm. Uh, so we had issues with the internet and issues with a number of different things. And I was always interested in, with, in crypto and, and blockchain technology. And uh, I had a number of bills um, that were related to blockchain technology and crypto uh, in 2017. Um, and there was no committee 
directly uh, to directly address a lot of these issues. So we fought, we fought to create um, what we, you know, what I'm the chair of now, the subcommittee on internet new technologies to be able to focus on, you know, what's happening in the future, to be able to focus on futurism and technology and making sure that we don't get uh, the, we don't, we're not Luddites and get technology happen to us, react to it, but we are, we make sure that we hopefully in New York, um, uh, embrace the positive aspects of, 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 of the future and what's happening in around the world. And this was something that's really important that we saw actually, you know, you know, during the pandemic, um, to see how, you know, uh, the future and technology is changing everything. How would you currently, you know, score or rate New York in terms of how it's been handling crypto up until this point? What's, uh, are you, are you disappointed? There was, satisfied? So, so there was no scorecard. It wasn't even on the radar screen, brother. It wasn't even, it wasn't even. Oh, so, I'm saying to date, like, you know, as of today, to, you know. To date, not well. No, to date, no. If I had to say not well, right. To date, that's not, not like a no, no. We're not dealing with it well, right. So we have, so we have, we have some bright spots, um, but you know, but, but, and what do I mean? What, what would I, what would I, what, what, what would I rate? What's important, what's important for, to me for what policymakers can do in, in New York is to create an environment that is conducive to growth, to economic stimulation, to, to, to great economic investments, to have an environment where it's safe for investors to be able to participate, safe for common people to participate, but also that we protect investors, right? We also protect, you know, the com the common person. So we have to be able to have policies to be able to strike that balance and say, hey, New York is open for business. New York is open for 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 consumers. New York is open for investors. But we'll also protect you here, and you can trust investments in New York. And we have to find that proper balance. I don't know. I don't think we have, and which you know, I, and I think that we need to be able to do that. Another thing that's really important in the crypto space is the narrative. It's really important in the space. So right now, as far as our policy, you know, policy wise, we're, we're not, we, I give us a, you know, uh, I would say we're failing, but when, I don't want to say that we're failing because there are some great efforts that, that's happening. Um, so, you know, we, we have an average score, but we stuck, but we stuck with the narrative, right? The, the story out there is that is is that New York is not friendly for you know for crypto and that's and that's that's the story worldwide and that's that's that 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 has to change we we we're losing that battle badly. What do you think is like you know one of the you know easiest things we could do like low hanging fruit in terms of starting to change that narrative like what what are some well, of the a couple, things a couple of things now I, I listen to you a lot Doug and you you beat up on the bit license a lot yeah. right so yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so the bit license is not all bad. Um, uh, as a matter of fact, when you, if you see what happened, um, very recently with, an, and I don't want to in Ben Lasky's, uh, firm, it's, it's not bad, right? <laughs> look, you know, um, if you look at what happened recently, uh, with, with a number of, of, of exchanges that went bankrupt and, right. And folks lost their money, mm -hmm. you know, Celsius is one, uh, it, but you know, folks lost their money, um, because these, uh, exchanges weren't proper, weren't run properly, and they didn't they didn't have the licenses in New York. But we saw that you know one of the things that we have to do is we have to make sure that we protect our consumers here. In 2013, whatever you say about the bit license, you know that was that was uh, promulgated in response to Mt. Gox in 2013, 2014, around around that time, and we said that you know I keep in mind. And I know this is Monero and I know it's important about, you know, I know that, you know, you guys value privacy. Um, yeah. But when stuff hits the fan, man, you guys call us, right? When you guys lose your money, you, we don't want government. We don't want blah, blah, blah. They, the first place they call is government, right? So, we, Doug, we didn't have an answer in 2014 when folks lost their money in New York, right? There was no response. There was nothing, you know, and... And that cannot happen um, where where people where, where there are exchanges. And again, there's, before I go into that, 
uh, we have to appreciate that regulating in this space is difficult. It's hard to be able to number one find the pro strike the proper balance of of to make sure that there you know there's there you know there's an environment for for open and conducive to uh, to innovation, to investment, to economic growth, while at the same time protecting you know consumers and investors, and 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 trying to figure out that fairness. It's it's difficult to find that balance, and at the same time, Doug, you got to do this in an ever changing, ever changing conditions. When I first start, when I first got elected, uh, you know, six years ago, the crypto scene was much different than it is now. A lot has changed in six years, and now you got to regulate in this space, right? So, and 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 there are a lot of new things that 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 have come about. So we have to figure out, you know, so when we talk about you know proper regulations, we have to figure out what the proper guard guardrails are. Back to the bit license. The bit license, you know, so the bit license, what it is, is it, it you know, uh, the agency that promulgates those those uh, that that uh, those regulations is our New York State DFS, Department of Financial Services. And that department is the probably the the only prudential regulator in the sta uh, state regulator in the country. And they and that license um, uh, is a license that is is uh, given to exchanges um, that are custodians of folks money and, and things of that uh, cryptocurrency and virtual currency uh, exchanges but you have to have certain things in place to be able to make sure that you know the, that people's uh, people's hard-earned money is protected and um, yeah but no I one I mean I, I I don't really know the you know the inner workings of it. maybe you could give some insight but isn't it restricting or preventing some parties from g getting involved that that probably are that good, good companies but you know whatever they don't have <sighs> political connections essentially to, to get the no, light so that, look, that was that was look that, that was a narrative in 2015 yeah so tell me so tell me what the actual so, so the actual what what, what what it actually does is it gives a license to it's a money it's kind of like a money trans transmitter license that gives licenses to exchanges that are custodians of your money right so it's not so it's not that you know so that's what that's what it is so if you are transacting as a and i don't want to i don't want to call out any of the big exchanges but if you're operating as a as a as one of those exchanging the changes that doug wants to buy whatever on this platform or what have you it's it's regulating the platforms so that you're you know so that you are safe so it's it's regulating a mount gox right so um, that's what it is. And the, but the narrative has been in order to have any kind of crypto or blockchain business, you have to have a bit license in New York or what have you. And that's just, that's just not the case. Okay. Um, yeah, let me ask, let me ask you this. What do you think about like Monero in particular, right? In New York. So bit license aside, whatever it is, why, why aren't we seeing Monero, uh, you know, on exchanges in New York? Interesting. So, um, uh, one of the things we have to appreciate is that again, um, this industry is dynamic and changing fast. And even though I said I've been elected since 2016, I am, um, I am a relatively new and young lawmaker compared to folks that have been there for a long time. Um, um, and Doug, in this, in my short time in the, you know, assembly, right, um, Monero was two years old when I first got in, right? Um, and a cryptocurrency, if, and I say to tell this to people, crypto, if, if cryptocurrency, if blockchain was a person, it would have braces and pimples, right? So, and, but, but this young adolescent preteen is Bam Bam, right? As strong as it's doing a... So <laughs> we have to try to we have to try to figure this stuff out. So what do I do with privacy coins? What do I do with privacy tokens in New York? Right? How do I how do I deal with that? How do I think about that? Right? How do I think about that kind of thing? Why even and, call that? But yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Again, again, and I, even, I, no, even and we get caught up with language too, right? So again, the thing is, you know, I'm 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 stuck with the language that I have to describe what these things are. I, I, because, 
Continue. Even calling, even calling, even calling these things cryptocurrencies, right? Are they currencies? Are they assets? Are they? So we're still figuring out. Part of the issue with the bit license, part of the issue is, the, are the def- We can stay stuck here all day on definitions, right? Because these coins can be one thing or multiple things all at the same time. How do I, right? Where, where, whereas fiat is not. It's just Right, fiat. So what, when, I, when I think about Monero, is, is, Monero re, is Monero really digital cash? If it's digital cash, then that's something different than other stuff, right? Mm-hmm. Because with cash, when I exchange cash, I don't have, right? I don't know, you know, you don't have the, you know, you, you, you don't know, you can't follow that cash like you can with electronic transactions. If that's the case, if we want to retain that in the electronic world, then you know there's a place for Monero, right? And and there's a place on how to, there's a place for to- coins that do that. Mm-hmm. If we don't, they're not. But we have to think about: Do we want that, right? Do we want? That? That's a question to ask, right? Yeah, that's a question. Well, that's, ask, right? What is your uh, what's your opinion on that? What do you think? I'm I'm wrapping my head around it, <laughs> right? Because, because well, what, do you, in, what do you think about what do you think about cash in general as, as is? Are you you think to have the utility of cash is something important for? I think so. Yeah. So I think look in the in in in, in physical world, cash is important, right? In physical world, cash is important. In physical world, in physical world, you know, if I want to tip, well, I don't want to talk about. I'm not saying you know I'm use cash to avoid paying taxes or anything like that. But physical world, if I want to tip a couple of dollars or put somebody like that, I want to give money, you know, I, I can use cash the way I want to use cash when I want to use cash. It doesn't have to be for illicit reasons, right? I could be, I could use cash, you know, if I'm traveling, you know, I have my credit cards and I have cash and I could use it how I want. In the physical world, maybe I don't want every purchase to be recorded, right? In the physical world, you know, so, um, and that's not necessarily a bad thing. Um, so, you know, so, you know, putting on my government hat, you know, do I want, you know, should we retain those kinds of properties in the electronic digital world? Um, you know, and can we do so? We want to minimize, uh, you know, we want to minimize, you know, illicit uses of, of transfer of value. We can't eliminate it, but we want to minimize it. But can we do so? by having a form of, you know, by having forms of, 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 of coins that can operate like cash. And that's something I, I don't have an answer for that. I'm just saying that that's, that's something that, I'm, you know, I'm, that we have to think about and look at, you know, and, and look at, and I think, you know, I'm, I'm leaning towards, if it were me, I think we should retain the ability to do so. The how is, interesting the how do we limit how it is do we do we say you can only you can use you you have to have you know okay you can have x amount and limited of this amount of whatever coin it is to be able to use as cash do we blah blah you know so for example why not why not go down the extreme route of just saying you know you're you're free to use monero you know as ever you uh, however you see fit as much as you want obviously if you're going to engage in illegal activity it's illegal and you know if we if we catch you 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 know you're going to jail but why why even try to punish or gauge the tool in any way just let the tool be the tool and punish the users if they misuse the tool you know uh, you know, I'm not saying again. I'm, I'm asking the question. I'm not saying what I'm going to do or not do. You know, what I would suggest or not suggest. I'm just asking. You know, I'm just. What do you we, we think of that that concept? Is that is that something that possible can fly politically, or is that a, a non-starter? I don't know. I'm I'm not sure. Right. So the politics could change. I'm not sure. So so even 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 getting to this conversation about the difference between Monero and 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 other coins, it's. I'm, I, I can't even broach this, you know, uh, wait, with my wait, with my colleagues. Right? For one second, and just say, yeah. Anybody's list like you. You are you're rare, man. This is you're you're doing a great <laughs> job. The fact that we can have this conversation right now is a tremendous leap forward. So, but, but you know, uh, but there, there, there are interpret any of my you know questioning for you know trying to attack you. I'm just trying to, you know, engage with you and get and get the information out there and show the people that. You're you're on it, man. So it's trying to be trying to, but, but look, but look, but look. that, and then 
yeah, what do you think? How do we get other people in the assembly to start to really truly understand these technologies? But what the, before I get into that too, but you know, there are there are tools, right, to be able to um, to be able to have to be able to view certain transactions, right? Even even un, even with Monero, right? There are tools to be able to. Yeah, you, uh, could provide, yeah, yeah. you know, you could provide your view keys, right? The view keys. There you go. There you go. So if you're audited or something, you know, you could. And yeah. You're, you're for, forced to show. You okay. can provide a view yeah, key. Yeah. Look, what's really important is education, right? What's really important is education, uh, and 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 exposure to 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 these technologies and to this stuff. Um, right. These conversations are really important. What's really important too is I think now keep in mind, you know, and and I know you know your 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 you know your audience is about privacy, but but you know I believe that fair, common sense, evergreen regulations and guidelines helps the adaption and penetration of cryptocurrency um, in the general public, right? So there's still you know there's still you know a wide gap of of community education and community adoption, um, so that's reflected in the that's reflected in the legislature. Um, so that's why it's really important to make sure that you know education is important. It's really important to also to uh, you know to to let you know to to expose the policymakers to you know to this industry and to you know to to cryptocurrency as a whole. Let me this is kind of further along on, on these thoughts is so getting people to understand crypto uh, legislators, obviously, and getting but also just getting them to care and understand about the ideals behind it. Right. I feel like there's a disconnect there. Obviously, people that listen to this show get it. You know, a lot of people that are old school Bitcoiners get it. You know, this the whole ethos and why it's important, why crypto actually matters. Uh, as a technology, it's you know not so you know you could pump Dogecoin to you know make make a hundred million dollars off a of Dogecoin after putting a hundred bucks into it. That's not what crypto is about. It's about preserving liberty, right? In in protocol form, and getting you know having the debate around around those core principles as to whether or not that's something that's important and vital. And if it is, do we just let it let it run free? Because, you know, at the end of the day, it's, it's going to create more liberty uh, and it's going to, you know, it's going to be better for society. Like, how do we how do we start having those conversations on, on the floor of the assembly? So part, part of the issue is, again, we you know, I have to say, you know, the issue is not only on our side. Right. The, the issue is not only on the, the, the lawmaker side to. Um, try to understand it or to try to get it or try to understand it um, or even have it as a topic. There's a role that you have a role also, right? The, 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 the community has a role, right? The community has a, has, a, has a duty to be able to make sure that they come and, and educate us and lobby us and create the narrative and, and, and make the proper message. Doug, I remember when I first got elected, brother, I brought a number of lawmakers to, I'm not going to name, I'm not going to call anybody out, but I, uh, to, to a place that was a crypto center in, um, this in 2017, uh, in downtown Manhattan. And I spoke to the person first and I met with them like a couple of times before I brought a number of lawmakers over there. Um, and when I brought them to, for them to explain what cryptocurrency was and what, you know, this coin was or what have you, the guy lost his mind and said, you guys mean nothing. We're going to take over the world. The banking industry doesn't mean nothing. The government doesn't mean anything. You know, we, he, he was a, he was a, a crypto anarchist. And I was like, Oh my God. Oh, I just lost. I just lost half the assembly right there. I wasn't, right. it wasn't me it was like slightly longer hair. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, then you have folks you, then you have folks that come and just speak about you know the you know hash rates and protocols and just and just lose my members totally just you know so how do we tell the how do how do how do you guys tell the message properly right how do you tell the message properly 
to to for for uh, for 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 policymakers to be able to 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 understand the benefits of this this thing, this coin, these assets or what have you, uh, and to understand, you know, that, you know, that people are actually using it, that people are building businesses around it. Um, there's been a, um, there's been a fight for figuring out the soul of crypto in New York for the past two years about, you know, there's been a movement to, to ban, you know, uh, uh, proof of work mining in New York state. And, and that showed me, you know, certain groups, you know, had the ear of the policymakers and then you had, you know, your industry and your industry didn't do a good job to me, in my in my in my opinion, enough, well enough to be able to to fight back the messages, the messaging and to be able to properly frame what the argument is. Right. The argument was all good. The argument was all, you know, this useless technology takes too much energy. That was the, that was the full argument, yep. right? And then, and we had, then we had, you know, uh, you know, a number of different folks fighting against that. And then, you know, you sent, I, uh, I don't want to talk bad about this, but again, we could have done a better job. They could, you guys have could have done a better job, um, framing the people the in argument. the industry and the crypto industry. What, right. could, what could the of industry have done? Just given more support. so keep in mind for example so when i first let's just talk about the mining industry the the the, 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 the proof of work mining mm -hmm. um big companies upstate when i first got elected i i went you know in, in 2017 i went and visited a number of of these mining farms and at that time um there were um uh, you know i had huge mining farms and there were a few people working in those places, um, less than 10, probably five or less. And when rigs would go down, you know, so they had the people would just monitor the place. And if the rigs would go down or if they would break, they would send them to China to get them fixed. Two months later, they would come back or what have you. And that was the industry back then for at least in New York. Fast forward to, you know, fast forward only, you know, three, four years, I, when I go visit some of these places now, they have, or newer places, you know, they have, you know, they're fixing the rigs right, you know, they're, they're building rigs, they're, they, they have network engineers that are trained local people. The average salary in this place is, you know, three times the average salary in the local area, they're hiring local people, hundreds of people working, that story is not told. People don't see that. Big, big plants that were closed that used to burn coal are now burning clean energy. Whether you like Bitcoin or not, now this, this, whether you like whatever these things are or not, now there's economic activity happening, clean energy. Let's figure out how to harvest this. Let's figure out how to work and you know, let's figure out how to how to work and do this more efficiently, and be, to be able to see what they're doing right and to hire more people. That's a beautiful story. But when I when I listen to that, when, when I come to crypto discussions or what have you, you know, we don't really talk about the jobs, right? We don't talk about the the the, the job and business opportunities, right? And when policymakers understand, there's a big four letter word that's really important to folks. JOBS, that's a big deal, right? That's a that's that's kind of a big deal, um, and to see the you know the 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 economic uh, activity and the job growth in this industry, uh, especially in that sector, was you know it's astounding. Well, you, you certainly did a good job at it. I saw, I saw some of your 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 talks on it, but. Uh, were there any other people in the assembly picking that up and running with it? Uh, Doug, it's politics, <laughs> right? So yeah, behind closed doors. Yeah. But politically it wasn't cool to be on that side. Yeah. Yeah. Politically, you know, politically the, you know, the other side was, you know, was coming for you. Um, why? And I'm not saying and it shouldn't be a, it shouldn't be it shouldn't be a us versus them. So part of the issue too is part of the issue 
is that again, um, uh, many of these folks, many of these folks want to figure out how to and want to work to make sure that the grid is sustainable, to make sure that there's that, that they're, they're using cleaner energy. They want to make sure to 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 send power back to the grid, but they're not talking, right? And 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 it shouldn't be a and we need to, for example, um, I'm, we have a really important bill that we hope that the governor signs this year. It's called the, um, the Cryptocurrency Digital uh, Currency Task Force uh, bill that was signed by the, you know, signed, was passed in the assembly, passed in the Senate. The governor has until the end of the year to sign it. And what that will do is, now keep in mind, I said it's really difficult to legislate and come up with regulations in this space with things that are constantly shifting. As a matter of fact, it's so difficult that the president in the White House just released, I think last week, released a, an executive order saying, hey, let's figure out this cryptocurrency stuff. And he also passed this in, in March. Let's figure out this cryptocurrency stuff. A lot of stuff is going on. He did an interagency thing where he said, listen, I need reports. I need to figure this stuff out. He even did, they even came out with a report on looking at, at seeing what the environmental impact is for mining. And he said, look, I need reports on this because this stuff is, you know, this stuff is, is changing. It's big. It's new. And that's what the task force is going to do in New York State. Let's, 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 get, the, let's get the stakeholders together to help figure this out. But the answer shouldn't be stop it while we're trying to figure this out. Um, so that's, you know, that's the, that's the route that we should be going, uh, we should be going in because, you know, keep in mind, you know, Doug, I, 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 you know, I'm not smart enough to figure all this stuff out by myself, but we need to be able to get, you know, experts, policy, you know, experts, policymakers, uh, academics, environmentalists, um, uh, uh, you know, uh, 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 investors together, community people together to help figure this stuff out. Could you give us some insight into who's lobbying essentially against crypto? Like, where is that coming from? Like, the representatives are are getting that message from someone from somewhere, right? Who are they getting that message from? I don't want to talk about that. What, what's, what's 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 really important, Doug? What's really important? What's really important is that I think it's you know it's important no, to talk about. No, that. no, no. What's really important is that technology, this industry especially this industry, especially this new, I mean, industry, this, you know, you know, Doug, you're, 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 you know, you're, you're a champion for Monero and Monero is not even 10 years old yet. Right. What's really important. Monero is competing with, you know, some big stuff. You're competing with cash. You're competing with legacy institutions and, and you're sitting in the financial capital of the world, right? They could crush you. What's really important is to play defense. Now, I'm sorry, play offense, not defense, right? What's really important is not to say, oh my gosh, who's coming after us, blah, 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 blah. What's really important for the industry to say is to be able to play offense and say, here's why this is important, to build a narrative and not have to have a counter narrative because they say your stuff is bad, All right? So right now, right, you know, right now, and that's my opinion. No, you know, right. so that's fine. I'm just trying to get some insight into to where that's really coming from because I find it odd that the left, the de the Dems, basically are the party that's more opposed to crypto right now than the right. I think like it doesn't even really. I, I understand why, but there's a lot of hypocrisy there, right? Because I mean, you see like Senator Warren, right? She's she's out there. She's adamantly, pretty much adamantly against crypto. She's against against proof of work, you know. And meanwhile, it's like this. It's, it's like the great savior to a lot of the other issues that she's always kind of been out there lobbying for, right? It's distributing uh, power uh, back to the people, right? It's creating, a, it's basically reducing the power of, of the banking cartel, right? It's diffusing that power. Uh, it's making banking more access, freely accessible to all, you know, uh, completely egalitarian, all, all these great things, uh, you know, cash for all right and and all all the liberties that go along with that yet they find themselves opposed to crypto so i'm just trying to understand where that's coming from and in my mind it has to be coming from the people that are basically telling them 
to to go in that direction, right? So like who are the corporations that are pushing them in that direction? I have an idea of where stuff could be coming from, but I don't want to, you know, but what I do know is that crypto, there's enough. Why have the Democrats found themselves in this spot? Are, are, is, is that going to change? I don't know. You know, I don't know. And, 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 you know, if you keep asking that question, you know, do, do, do you want to unite everybody against crypto, right? Because crypto has enough for the right to go against them, right? So, you know, there's, because there's so much, you know, there's, there's, because crypto is, you know, can be, you know, can be, you know, we have privacy, we have to deal with, with, with finance, we have to deal with, we have to deal with, 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 with you know, with, the, you know, competition to, you know, to, to, uh, you know, to our traditional markets, we have to deal with all these kind of things. Do you really want to unite the forces, right? It's, it's really easy possibly to be able to, so I don't think that's the right question to ask, right? I think what's to me, to me, okay. if I was, if I was on, if I was on the industry side, I would play offense, right? And I would play offense to figure, to, to figure it out because I don't want, you know, the, to, to unite the left and the right against this, against this space. And, and, and part of the issue, too, is because there's not mass adoption, then it doesn't matter much for folk, right? So it's not, it's not, not going to be an issue that I run on, right? So my, in the, my local community, my local community doesn't know me as crypto guy. It doesn't mean much for them, right? So, so, so um, and that's part of the issue where, you know, to find folks to, you know, to, to buy in and to folks, you know, to find my colleagues to be able to vote with me on certain issues if the other side's against me. They don't, they, the people will understand the other side easier than they understand the, the, the you know, the, um, you know, the, this, this industry side, unless we talk about the jobs part or unless we talk about other things, or unless we frame and figure out what makes, what makes sense. Yeah, no, I, I totally hear. I mean, I ran for Congress in 2020. I totally get oh, what did you're you? Saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. obviously you know, I was the pro crypto guy, but I mean, I, maybe brought crypto up five times in terms of when I was face to face with actual constituents, you know, like, cause right, right. How, how do you breach the convo? And when you do their eyes roll back in the, you know, back in their head, Oh, it's, but it's about Liberty and they're getting rid of cash and you're going to need something or they're like, okay, yeah, yeah, uh, you know, <laughs> why, why do I care about this? You know, like, right, right. so, so it's not, yeah, so it's not, I have so, nothing to hide. I'm not doing anything wrong. So why should I care right. about privacy? Yeah. So it's like, I totally feel you on that. So where, when you say, you know, where, where you, where should the support be coming from? So just the, you know, the people that are, are in the industry in the New York area that are in the crypto. So, so, part, so part of the issue is part of the issue is, and this is happening on a certain level is that again, the, you know, the, in, the industry was great as decentralized, but, um, but you, you know, a central organization is important to be able to properly. And there are, there are certain groups, I don't want to call them out, but there are certain groups that have organized the industry to be able to, because the, you know, because, um, you know, we respond to people, we respond to community, we respond to lot, you know, we respond to people that lobby, we respond to folks that say they, they, they use it, we respond to companies that say we use it and people and blah, 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 you know, so, so it's important to be able to, to be able to do that. It's important for, it's important to see, you know, it's important for you to, to for the industry to be able to craft the message properly so that we can figure this stuff out. It's important for us to work together. That's why, you know, I, you know, I come to, you know, I come to industry events. So I try to meet people in the industry because the more I, I, I see what's happening, the more I understand, the better, the better, the better we are when we, when we draft this, uh, this, this, you know, um, uh, regulations, it's important for us to talk to the executive. It's important for us to understand where they're coming from. Uh, the executive, the DFS just came out with a, uh, actually, Actually, uh, you know, the merge just happened with Ethereum, I think yesterday or two days ago, right? The DFS just came out with a, uh, with a, uh, a white paper, you know, uh, talking to the licensees about this kind of thing and what to do what are we, while we're looking to see what's, what's happening. So, we're, you know, we're, we're trying to figure this stuff out. But what's important is that th there's a role for you guys. And the role is not just to sit on the side and, you know, throw, you know, throw popcorn at us and tell us we suck. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, so you guys have to roll up your sleeves and get on the court and try to play. Right. And, that, and help. You, right? make, so, you know, I totally agree with you, man. I can't, I, you know, I couldn't agree more. We were looking to throw uh, a protest in New York City on Halloween night a privacy protest. I don't know how have you been fought. Did you follow what happened with Tornado Cash? Uh, yes. Yes. How the Treasury Department. 
uh, you know, OFAC basically sanctioned yes. the use of it. So they basically effectively sanctioned a tool and prevented people from, from using a tool. So we were, I was trying to get people excited Tough. about that, you know, Whoa. let's go out. Let's, you know, let, let, let the people, you know, let, let the, you know, the, the royalty know that, you know, we, we want our liberty back, you know, they're, they're infringing upon our free speech and all the code is speech. And, uh, I, yeah, I gotta be honest, we didn't get too much traction with, with the, with the message. Look, what's important, I think what's important too, is again, keep in mind, you know, who you, who you're targeting that message to, who's the audience, right? Who's the audience, who, who can, who can understand this kind of stuff? Who should you address this to? So one of the things I talked about earlier was when it comes to policy making, when it comes to these, uh, making regulations, definitions matter and, you know, trying to understand this stuff matters. Right. So, uh, when I said that, you know, I'm, I was just using the language that I'm using because you know, I'm dealing with a, you know, an asset class or this, this thing that's, that's changing, that's ever changing. Um, you know, the, um, the treasury, I forget that department of the treasury office that came out with that, uh, and came up with that anyway, OFAC, um, of the US OFAC, OFAC, right? OFAC. Yep. Yes. Yeah. So the, that's the office of financial of foreign asset control. Yes. Right. Which is a division under uh, the Treasury Department that said that, okay, that found that maybe 40, 50 million dollars was used by certain people or entities in North Korea. Um, and instead of, uh, and under the, um, uh, under, um, they listed on a list. I forget the name of the list, but on the yeah, it was bad a, people. Yeah, it was a sanction list, you know, of a, on the sanction list. They right. Sanctioned all these Ethereum addresses, and then they effectively sanctioned the use of Tornado Cash itself. Right. Uh, so and, they, you know, that, that kind of crossed the new line because it wasn't just a traditional sanction where they're saying, you know, you're not allowed to send money to Clyde. Uh, they said you're not allowed to interact with this tool whether or not you're sending money to Clyde. Uh, but just because, you know, he's also part of the system, we're preventing anybody from touching or, or using it is essentially how it was initially interpreted. They since yeah. made some comments saying, right. oh, well, we didn't mean that, you know, uh, you know, that we're, we're sanctioning code. You know, you could still publish code and whatnot. But it was seemingly a big move forward in terms of uh, no doubt about it. infringing on people's uh, fundamental rights. No doubt about it. You know, one, one of the things that we will talk offline about how to properly um, try to get to us, right? To get to policymakers or, or what have you. But um, um, the Halloween thing would have been cool, though. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to ask you to come down and be a speaker. I don't, I don't know. I don't know how cool that would have been. I don't know if you up for that. I would have rattled. No, you, get me, you know, you got me. No, you're going to get me in trouble. I can't do that. No. I got in trouble when I ran for Congress, as you as you can imagine. <laughs> um, you know, I ran as a Republican, but they they weren't exactly you know uh, into everything that I, that I was pushing out there. Um, so, but how about these, so how about back to the cash thing, right? So, because I'm trying to get insight into whether or not you think we can get the people, the constituents normal people to start to care about these issues because at the end of the day that's the real battle line that's the real issue how do we get it to the point where people care enough where they wouldn't want to see you know something like monero banned or regulated to the point where it's no longer usable as cash how do we get them to care i know we kind of initially talked about whether or not cash even you know digital cash is is, is necessary i certainly think it is do you think we get to that point where there's a lot of constituents that start to agree like oh yeah i see that they're getting rid of cash i'm going to want some way to be able to tr transact freely without going through a bank or is it just like whatever i'll just keep keep using venmo it's super cheap to send why would i care about you know hey, Doug, so you are you are you are way ahead of where 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 where, where even um, many new yorkers are you know that there's a push in new york city there's been a push or a move in new york city to sanction cashless businesses. Forget about crypto. Forget about crypto. We just talk about cashless businesses. Mm -hmm. All right. I'm also dealing with making sure that we close the digital divide and we, we make sure we address, we, we get the unbanked banked 
and we get the un- and we have less underbanked. What does that mean? I had I, I, I you know what's really important for us to do is to make sure that we remove friction for the transfer of value. Yeah. Right. If you want if you want to make it easy, yeah, if you want to set it, that's it. That's the goal. Right. So if you want to if you want to see who can receive value easy, go go mess with some college kids. They have 20 million ways for you to send them money, brother, right? <laughs> <laughs> Whatever way, right? So but our small businesses need to be that way, right? I still have I still have cash only small businesses. I still have people that only go to check cashing places. I still have folk that don't have access to broadband, right? So I still have a government where, so here's an example. I, during the the pandemic, a number of people, well, not that many people, but some people wanted me to be there to officiate their wedding. And in order to do so, I had to, um, I had to pay some kind of fee to one of the New York city agencies. Now, you know that they only accept cash and money order in 2021 back they only accept cash and money. I mean, the government also, you know, certain agencies are, are making it difficult for me to give you money, right? Even now I've been fighting to make sure that the state has more ways to accept taxes. You think we tax a lot in New York? Maybe, but why are we making it difficult to get your tax money, right? Shouldn't we accept all forms of, of, of should we make it real easy for you to be able to send you? so? So Doug, we have to, we still have to make sure that we, you know, we have folks have access to, to financial products. Yeah. I have to make sure that it's, you make it though, easy. Just so I fully understand it though, but you're, you're in support of businesses that want to stay cash, right? Are you saying like we should potentially. You, you should have all the options. All the options. It should right. be, you should have all, we should, you should make it easy to transfer value. Right. It should be very easy. Right. That's what I'm saying. Cash right. is one of the most basic forms, right? If, I, if I'm here and, you know, no, my, I, no, my dad, my dad I is called into town as, as an, you know, as I immigrated here and I got nothing. I got, I don't have a bank account. Uh, what do I do? I go get a cash job and now I need to be able to spend that cash, right? So without cash, we're, we're cutting off the most basic level of, of entering into the system, right? This is, this is not an or, this is not an or conversation. This is an and conversation, right? So I don't know, you don't get rid of, you know, if I get my, my dad is not going to do electronic, you know, transactions. He's just not, my dad's not going to go to the bank. He goes to check cash. He plays. I don't like it. He goes to check cash. He plays. He wants cash. He doesn't trust banks, whatever. I'm not going to change his mind. Fine. Right. I want him to be able to transact and do what, he, what, do what he wants to do. Um, but there's not, there's not, or, and we have to make it easy for people to be able to transact. Right. That sounds like a Monero guy. A hundred percent. No doubt about it. No, no doubt about it. Um, but you know, years ago I went to go see, years ago I went to go try to see, I went to go and try to spend my crypto on pizza. And I went and did that. And, you know, I, and I show, I did a video about it. You can find it on YouTube and I went to go and, you know, searched, and went and, you know, I got to the counter. I love your YouTube channel, by the way, man. I was checking out your videos. <laughs> but there's one way I went to go buy, you know, buy, 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 you know, buy pizza with Bitcoin in particular. Okay. Um, but I got to the counter. I couldn't pull the trigger. Me, I couldn't. They wanted, they wanted my Bitcoin. I didn't want to give it up. Right? Uh, so. okay. <laughs> what year was this? This was like 2018 or something? Had to be 2018, 2017. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, That's awesome. But a lot of things have to change, right? A lot. So, so for for adoption to happen, right, right, things things have to happen, right? So, uh, 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 people, users have to feel comfortable exchanging in the stuff, right? So we can say what coin they will feel comfortable using, whether it's a, I don't want to name anything out there, but a stable coin or something like that, but. If you're not gonna you're not gonna buy you know you're not gonna use your stocks to buy pizza, right? If you view it, you, if you view that coin that way, but that's something we have to understand, right? So, and that's something we have to try to educate folks. I just helped support. Uh, there was a a crypto academy in one of the housing projects in New York City to educate people on you know what crypto is or what this stuff is or what investing is and, and stuff like that. But which what really has, you know, people have to understand, people have to learn about what this, you know, what this, this asset class is 
and that's I'm sorry for even using the word asset class, right? Because it's more than that. But people have to learn, you know, learn what cryptocurrency is, um, and that's part of it, right? Part of the education. And what's happening, and what you're doing is really important because when the topic of cryptocurrency is on that uh, is on, um, uh, you know, regular media, it's about doom and gloom. It's about oh my gosh, look how much it's dropping. It's about you know dark web, and uh, and and if that's the if that's the main story, then uh, then it's going to be a tough road for this industry. Yeah, we got we got to we got to change the narrative. I think it's it's starting to happen. I'm I'm hopeful. Obviously, otherwise I wouldn't be doing this. But um, what do you think of how about capital gains? Right. So like every time theoretically, every time you go spend your you know your Bitcoin, your Monero, your Ethereum in New York. Or really anywhere in the U.S., it's it's a capital gains event, uh, event, right? Um, would you be supportive of you know li- uh, living in a world, you know, particularly in New York, where there'd be no capital gains assessed when when people are spending their their crypto? Again, so we have to look at again when we talk about you know, uh, when you look at crypto, you know, is it is it we have to look at how it's used, right? If this thing is using, yeah. Because this thing can be multiple things, that's what makes it so difficult, right? But in the event where I bought, if I did buy the pizza with my Bitcoin, that no, that I used that as cash, right? I right. used that theoretically. As- you had to pick out, right? Let's say you acquired that, you know, Bitcoin for free. You mined it in 2011, and now you're going to go spend it on pizza in 2016. It went from basically zero to whatever, uh, ten thousand dollars. Uh, and you're spending ten dollars worth, which went from you know there's there's a taxable capital gains uh, event there. So, but I obviously yeah I I don't think there should be. But do you agree that like there there shouldn't be? It's- no, it, it depends again. It depends on how you know. It depends on how it's used, right? It depends on how it's used, and it depends on you know what we you know what we look at that and uh, you know um, right. So if it's used strictly as cash, no. If it's used as if you're cashing out, you know. At the invest, you know, at the, at the investment, then 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 it's it's like a stock, right? So it depends on the minimum right? amounts. If you're just the, using the, the, challenge, the challenge, the challenge with crypto is that you know this stock can be used directly as cash, right? And then what do we, you know, how do we how do we define that? How do we figure that out? I'm I'm not sure. That's why I need that task force to help figure this out, right? So, right, because this this is not this is not like you know this is not like you know a you know it's not like a share of Disney. Right. Share of Disney. When I want to cash out, I cash out, you know, you know, I cash out the market. But this Disney stock, I can go buy pizza directly with it. Right. With the the dominant denominations of it. Right. right? How how do we how do we deal with this new animal? How do we figure this out? I, you know, I I'm not here to say what that is, but I know that this is I know it's different. I know it's new. I know it feels funny. I'm not too sure what it feels like, but I know it feels funny. And how do we you know, how do we how do we do it? And and if I choose any one side whether i tax it or not that's going to have implications what is that going to mean long term what's it what's that going to be for the community what's it going to be for the industry what's that what, what's that what's that going to mean for government and i think america should be a place i think new york should be a place that's leading in policy that's leading in this space um that's fair um and that has a, a fair environment for you know for for consumers uh and for the industry as well so I don't I don't know how to properly find that balance. Let, let, let me ask you this theoretical question: do, you, do we get to the point in New York where you know I could walk into a Seven uh, Eleven or you know and and spend my Monero, right? It's not a taxable event. It's just like the equivalent to cash. And then also I could you know walk into you know one of those gold gold stores stores is like buy and sell gold right for and like you know turn cash into monero on the spot like do we do we get to that that point in new york where there's just you know people are just using monero like it's cash and just fluidly transacting between monero and cash do you think that's possible i i I foresee a future where, where 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 people are using cryptocurrency like cash. I do see. I don't know what currency that's going to be. I don't know how it's going to happen. I don't know if it's going to be. I don't know if you're going to spend your Monero like that. I don't know. Right. I, I, I yeah, did. I, technically, I, you could go do it today. Right. Like there's, yeah, there's yeah, no yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like I said, in crypto. 
Doug, I tried that five years ago and I couldn't yeah. pull the bullet. I couldn't, I couldn't pull the trigger, right? So oh, yeah. I, you know, Well, that's just a problem with crypto, right? Or a problem with Bitcoin, yeah. really. Just, yeah. But, but, you know, I think, I think that, I think that it's possible if, you know, I think if, you know, theoretically it's possible in New York, I think it's, it's possible theoretically again. And as and I stated, where, where I'm like buying, you know, Monero on, on Coinbase or some exchange, like, do you, do you see that in our future where, again, I can't predict the future, man. I can't predict the future, but I, but I, but I, but I, what I can predict is that I, I can't predict that if we have, if we have transparent, clear, regulations the adoption will be much easier in 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 our state i think i you know i do believe that i do believe that i do believe and i keep in mind you know i do know you have you know the cyberpunks up here saying why the hell do you have this guy on here what have you but if if trust me if we have fair rules that'll help with the adoption of of uh, of cryptocurrency in the general public are you are you a cypherpunk at heart, man? Just just <laughs> once, if if you're a cipher. <laughs> I get what you're doing. You gotta you gotta play the play the part. But it's not just, it's not just playing part. I really, I really believe. I get, I get you. No, <laughs> no, but I no, I really believe. But I really believe that if we if we have if we have you know if we have clear rules that are that are, that are fair that find the proper that strikes the proper balance, you'll find you'll, you'll find better adoption in the community. How did we didn't? I didn't even ask you. So how did you get into crypto? Because you were into crypto before you got into you know before you became an assembly person, right? You said you showed up there. There was a lot of things on the shelf in terms of people not really working with tech. So, it sounds so, like so I'm, yeah. So I'm an intellectual property attorney. So I'm an IP attorney already. Um, and then I actually worked for a state senator in 2013, 2014 when Mount Gox happened. And there were people called my call, call the office, and I was the chief of staff of the state senator, and we had no answer. We had we we're like, oh my gosh, and you know, we we're like, as a matter of fact, at that time, they were like, man, we have to find out who this big who who. He's like, Clyde, go get Shatoshi Nakamoto on the phone. Let's find out who these people are. <laughs> <laughs> and I was doing the research, trying to find the developers, trying to find the people. I was like, oh my God, we can't find these people. I don't know what's happening. <laughs> what do you mean there's no CEO? Go go get go get this Nakamoto guy. I was like, all right, I'll, you know, okay. Yeah, so that actually happened. That was happening. Yeah. And then so did that led you down the, the crypto rabbit hole? And then did you start like what was your your personal? Well, so that I saw that and I was then, you know, people offered to pay me, you know, so I, you know, I I worked with a lot of tech companies uh doing intellectual property and you know, folks paid me in Bitcoin oh, and sure. I was like, Okay, you know, I didn't think it was a big deal. I didn't know about that back, you know, and um yeah, I've been watching since then. So back then I was, you know, watching it in twenty 15, 2016, you know, I was, you know, buying, you know, denominations of just a few coins back then. Um, uh, and then I was looking at the legis when I got elected, I was looking at the legislative um, uh, uh, environment and all we had was the bit license, you know, um, in New York, but across the country. So uh, I, you know, I, I, um, I introduced a number of bills at the time and said, Hey, maybe New York should come up with this. I, you know, I was thinking about back then it was all about use cases. Oh, blockchain could do this and blockchain could do that and blockchain could do this. So, you know, I figured, you know, so everybody was thinking about, you know, how do we digitize stuff, right? How do you put stuff on the blockchain? And I was thinking about that kind of thing. And, um, um, uh, and then we passed, actually passed the law to have the cryptocurrency digital currency task force in 2019. That law got passed, signed by the governor at the time, and the task force was supposed to get together, but um, the pandemic happened, um, and uh, you know, turned everything upside down. So, uh, you're an IP attorney. That's awesome, man. Yeah, I'm. I'm actually a patent. I mean, I've only patent like one or two things. I don't really practice, but a patent attorney by by trade as well. Oh, sweet. And oh, I, cool. I, like, I like to ask these you know, this question often, and it's coming from, you know, the, the in IP mind of mine is like, what do you see as the invention of crypto? Like what, what, 
what is the value proposition? What if you were to patent, you know, uh, Bitcoin? What is it doing that didn't already exist? What is the new and useful and non-obvious invention? What is the the core invention of of the UC being of, of crypto? Hold on a second. I'm I'm sitting in the dark. Let me go change something. Can you see this? Yes, I can't see what it is, but it looks like it's a patent of some sort. No, well, this is the whole Bitcoin white paper. Okay. It's the Bitcoin white paper, all in one place. That's the, you know, that was, you know, came out October 13, 2008. And that was the first time, and that was the document that described digital scarcity, bro. Okay. Right? So we could, you could, you know, everybody, you know, that described digital scarcity. That described how to make sure that, you know, when you, when you have something on the blockchain, it's the one thing, it's immutable and it's, and it's, and it's scarce. It's, it's what, that, that is what everything else rests upon. And that is, you know, that is, you know, was amazing at the time. It still is amazing now to be able to have, to be able to have, and that's why this thing is worth what it's worth. That's why it's worth something, right? Because uh, of that scarcity. Also, it provides, it describes proof of work. Everyone is poo-pooing on POW, on proof of work. Proof of work is, a, is, on one sense, a beautiful thing because guess what? Everyone has to have skin in the game. And, and, and all, these other kinds of, uh, all these other kinds of regimes, whether it's proof of stake, whether it's consensus stake, what, again, the proof of work said that, look, everyone has to participate. Everyone can participate. I don't care if you're white. I don't care if you're black. I don't care if you're short. I don't care if you're tall, blah, blah, blah. Yo, your computer got to do something. Right. Just like mine. Right. We all, we all got to pay for energy, whatever it is. So that's whether you like it or not, it's egalitarian. It's, it's right. We all got to, you know, you can't, you can't come in, you can't say, Hey man, I got, you know, now again, you can say that, that some people can have more, you know, uh, more mining power or what have you, but in, the, in its rawest form, in its rawest form, that is fair, democratic, uh, and 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 allows anybody with the salt with the computer with the connection and the software to participate. That's amazing, bro. Yeah, right. That's that's, that's, that's amazing, right? And you explain it well. I couldn't agree more, man. Couldn't agree more. So you don't have to, you don't even have to speak English. You don't have to speak blah blah blah. I don't even have to know who Satoshi Nakamoto is. I don't have to. So that's. That's a powerful thing. And, 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 and all these other coins, all these other industries are born out of that white paper. So that, that's why I said, you know, that's why I'm not so quick to ban proof of work mining. I'm not so quick to blah, blah, blah. That's the granddaddy of it all, right? So, but, but how do we make sure, you know, granddad's not killing everyone, right? So how do we make sure that we, you know, well, we do it's a ridiculous argument to begin with. It's like, <laughs> might as well start regulating, you know, every other technology that uses Which energy. is true, right? Which is true, right? There are a lot of different, you know, there are a lot, there, you know, there are a lot of industries out there that use, you know, that use, you know, a lot of resources. Um, but the moral of the story is we have to work together to try to, to, to figure our way through this. I just want to stick on the thing because this is a good conversation. So, Digital scarcity, totally agree. And, um, you know, but Monero equally is, you know, abides by these these same concepts as digitally scarce as well. But what do you, how about the digital cash aspect of it? A digital, a peer to peer digital cash system. Do you think that's essential to what Bitcoin is or do you not view it that way? It is essential. It's essential. again. It's not so. It, 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 I can send you. I can send you. Right, right. Has it? Has it been? You know. Has it been used as? Is being? Is being? Is be, so the value has been transferred. That 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 part of it is is, is true, right? So people, idea that that you know you can send two peers can make a transaction uh, without censorship, without anybody being able to stop their transaction, and you would think see see their transaction, right? Like a, like yeah, a so look, look, transaction. Look, that the experiment's obviously working, right? The experiment has obviously been, been you know, been uh, been something that that that's been happening for, you know, I guess the first transaction was January, whatever it was, two thousand nine, right? So it's been, you know, uh, you know, um, uh, it, it's it's been it's been working, 
is it ca- has it has it been cash yet? No, it's not. I don't think it's. No, but is, know, that, is, that the inv- is that what was invented? Right. I know digital scarcity. Agree that that's one of the elements that makes it cash like. Right. Because it ha- it has to be. Yeah, so I don't I don't think it's a cash system yet. I don't think it, I don't think it's a cash system. And I don't think I don't think it's fair to say what it is. It's, it's only been 14 years. Right. I don't think it's fair to say what it is yet because it's still morphing. It's still morphing. It's still blah, blah, blah. Right. So. Um, on the day that I went to go buy pizza, it was not cash to me, right? It was not, you know, so we could talk about what it was theoretically, right? And what you, what the, what the white paper says, but when we talk about money, bro, money is very simple. Money is complicated, but not right. The, the concept of money is really complicated, right? This, how do we use this? When we talk about digital cash, when we talk about hard cash, when we talk about tulips, when we talk about stones, when we talk about you know, having this paper or these coins represent stuff. When we talk about gold, that is real difficult concept to figure out. Well, you know, this that's an amorphous concept to figure out why this thing is worth value and how do I take this value to give this something. That is real difficult to figure out, right? So, you know, to figure out when we talk about this digital cash, to figure out, you know, this, how does this, why does this computational energy that I invest in, you know, make this thing worth value. That's real. That's that's a difficult thing to wrap my head around. But when I have five dollars in my pocket, I know what five dollars is, right? When I have the cash in my pocket, I would, so when I had the when I had the when I had the Bitcoin in my in my pocket, I couldn't spend it. So and so in my mind, right for for average person's mind, you know, for the average person, will they think like me? Right? Well, they, if it had to be cash, I'm talking about, you know, to be able to exchange it for something else, right? To exchange out of it. Um, or will they, will they use it as cash? So, and I don't, I'm not sure if that's what you're asking, but I don't think Bitcoin now and cryptocurrency as a whole um, is a cash system just yet. Right, but do you think that it, like that's what it's it's uh, intending on being? Is is that what the invention of crypto was meant to be? Is just creating a way for people to trend? You said it earlier in the convo, like uh, a method for everybody to be able to freely transact. Was that the invention? You know, is that do we so get transact? To- yeah, so but transact means a lot of different things, right? So, so just transact means okay to be, to stay within the system and just transact and get you know cash for Bitcoin and stuff like that, right? No, no, transact. No, I, mean, I mean, like you know. It's it invented a way for people to use ca- something that's like cash on the internet, right? And what is I, yes, so, yes, I could take we we can meet down the block in Queens. I could take a hundred bucks out of my pocket, give it to you. It went from me to you. It didn't go yes. through a bank. It didn't go through a corporation. Nobody knows I sent it to you. Nobody knows how much I gave you. Creating that for the internet. Do you see that as being? you know, really what this is all about, or do you see it as being more of a, it's a digital asset and it's not necessarily that utility of being able to freely transact on the internet. Doug, I, I'm not trying to put you in a, a corner here. I'm just trying there's to, no corner. there's no corner. I think I said this before. Yeah. Yeah. yeah there's, there's no corner. Crypto is many things. Right. And, and some co- some tokens can be many things at the same time. Right. So it can be, you know, so folks talk about certain coins being digital gold, being stocks. That stock is not going to be I'm not going to Doug, I'm not going to give you my stock like that. So I'm just I'm not. Right. So um, I'm not going to use it that way. Some some stuff, some, you know, stable coins wasn't even a thing when I first got elected. Right. So that wasn't, you know, that wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't around back then. Um, And that could possibly be something, you know, that is, you know, used as cash um, um, and used, you know, used that way. And I think that, I think that, yes, in certain instances, and Doug, I told you, you know, almost 10 years ago, somebody, somebody paid me in crypto. Right. That was kind of like cash. Right. That was and I accepted it. So but that's not widespread. And again, part of what the, part of what needs for needs to happen for that mass adoption is there are a number of things for, for mass adoption to happen. But one of the things that has to happen and that I think 
uh, when government regulates it fairly, um, then uh, I can see adoption and the transaction of, uh, of, of crypto like cash easier. Without that, I don't think so. Without that, there'll, there'll be small groups There'll be niche groups, you know, that do it, but I won't. I don't. I wouldn't see it on. You won't see it on Main Street, per se. Awesome, man. I, I know we kind of spoke about, it, but so do you think they are going to then ban proof of work in New York? Is that the direction we're heading headed in, or it's it's going to fall apart? I think, Doug. I think I need your help. I think we need your help. I think we need. You know, we still have. We still have until December thirty first to tell the governor to sign my bill and not the other bill. And, uh, you know, they still need to hear, you know, from the industry. They still need to hear from you guys and show tell them why it's important. What, we kind, still of, need, what kind of traction are you getting? Are you, are you... Um, we need more. We need more. You know, we've gotten good traction. Um, but now with the with the with the uh, with the White House coming out with their with the, with their uh, uh, executive orders, it talks about what, you know, my task force it talks about putting a task force together and trying to figure it out with a report. But it also talked about, you know, the energy implications. So I don't know what the governor is going to feel. You know, I, I don't know where she she falls on that. So I, I'm hoping that you know they follow what the what the executive order said and saying, hey, let's study it, let's figure this out, let's make sure that we don't you know we don't kill the golden goose. She'll, she'll certainly wait till after election day. That's for sure, right? She's not, she's not, not doing anything now. All right, man. This this was fantastic. I really appreciate the genuine conversation, man. Well, Doug, look, it was a pleasure talking to you, brother. And it's uh, it's clear that you are you are also you also have political chops. So you know you. Uh... Not, not as good as yours, man. I was reading your history too. You you gave it a few shots. You weren't like you know you didn't just get lucky the first time and walk in. You worked your ass off from what from what I. Man, I fought. I fought. I fought. <laughs> I fought for this, brother. I fought for this, and I, you know, and I believe, I believe in what we're doing. I believe in, 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 you know, when I talk about crypto, when I talk about technology, I just don't talk about it. I try to find out. I try to go to different events. I get, you know, I try to be in the industry and learn about the the best I can. And you know, and Doug, there's a lot that I don't know, and I and I know that I don't know a whole lot. So we have to make sure that we, you know, we talk to the right people and we uh we include the right folks and the stakeholders to be able to help get us to the right place awesome man yeah i don't, I don't think people appreciate how much work it is being a, being a good representative like you know people people are frustrated and i totally get it i'm one of them right completely fed up with government on the on the state and federal level don't get me don't get me wrong but i after running you know and i've I've, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm in my uh, early 40s. I've experienced the world. I have, I have a, a great appreciation for representatives. I understand how difficult the job can be if you want to actually try to do it right. So, uh, I respect that, man. You're doing good All stuff. Right. All right, man. So, uh, where can people follow you? Learn more about you. Get involved if they want to, you know, help uh, get ner- certain initiatives across. So listen, you, everybody can follow me on the interwebs, all at my name, you know, Clyde Vanell on every, on all the platforms, you can reach out to me. Um, um, and, uh, and I want you to reach out to Doug because I'm gonna let Doug know how to make sure that, you know, they, you know, how to get in touch with us and our governor to, to, to help promote and sign the, uh, the cryptocurrency and, and, and digital currency task force bill to be able to help put together a uh, a task force to to help uh, the lawmakers uh, with a report to figure out how to properly regulate in this space. How and many- you guys can probably participate in it also if possible. Okay, very cool. Man. How many people are on this task force? I believe fifteen. I believe fifteen. I think. How do they um, How do they choose who who goes on the? We, we haven't chosen yet. So the, the governor has to sign the bill, and then there's some. You know, uh, a number of choices come out of the assembly. A number of choices come out of the Senate. A number of choices come out of the executive. So and we want to we want to have a mix of industry folks. We want to have a mix of community folks. We want to have a mix of uh, em- environmentalists and academics. Um, so we want to have a good mix of of uh, of people. You gonna get raw on there? I don't know. I don't know if it. I don't know if oh, we're not. We're not. The lawmakers aren't gonna be on it. Oh, okay. Wait. The lawmakers aren't gonna be on it. The, you know. You know. Outside folks are going to be on it to give a report to us. 
Oh, okay. Okay. I got it. I got it. Yeah. Very cool. Very cool, man. Yeah. Awesome. But Ed is one Ed is one of the people that, you know, again, again that I have to work on. And you then know, giving the report to who? To what committee? What committee is it going? Giving the report to the legislature and the and the executive, right? The governor okay. and okay. us. Some certain crypto committee or something. Yeah. Okay. He's gonna give the executive and us. Awesome. Because what happened with without it, without it, uh, without it, when folks hear bad stuff in 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 in, in you know in general media we do a bunch of reactionary kinds of bills, a bunch of reactionary laws. And, um, you know, this can help, this can help quell that. Very cool, man. Yep. All right. Appreciate your time. Thanks for coming on. Thank you, Doug. Love what you're doing. Uh, love Monero talks, you know, keep, you know, keep, uh, keep doing what you're doing, brother. I'm, I'm, I'm watching and listening. Cheers, man. Thank you. Thank you for joining us on this week's episode. We release new episodes every week. You can find and subscribe to our show on YouTube, Odyssey, iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, or wherever you listen to podcasts. Go to MoneroTalk.live to subscribe for a full list of places where you can watch and listen. If you want to interact with us, guests, or other podcast listeners, you can follow us on Twitter. And please leave us a review on iTunes. It helps people find the show, and we are always happy to read them. So thanks so much, and we look forward to being back next week.